What is up people and welcome back to the channel. So what you can see now is we're gonna give Alice a bit of loving. Just a bit of setup because she's a little bit loose now and I don't know why. So I know she doesn't drive as well with these wheels on as the other wheels. So the other wheels are going back on. But what I wanna do is I wanna check my camber, which I know is out on the driver's side. We've got adjustable bottom arms and tie bars on this and CAD adjustable camber and toe on the rear. So I want to check the camber, the caster, and we'll run through the toe. I'm not going to do corner weights because she's a really, she's a road car. So I know this isn't my normal content and I have been lacking the last few weeks just doing the odd video here and there. So these are what I use to set my stuff up. I've got two turn plates that go under your wheels and these are convex or concave, whichever it is. Uh, this is for my gauge. This is my camber and caster gauge. So it does uh, camber, caster, and KPI. So that goes on there. That goes on the wheel. Job's good. Huh? You need one of these doofers or anything that can register at 20 degrees, a paint and some tape. So what I do know is this wheel's got a lot more camber than the other wheel. Always has done since I fitted these bottom arms. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, we're going to ring it forward a bit. And then we're going to look at our camber. We're going to set our camber first. About one degree, nothing to one. Because it's a road car, you want maximum contact. So if you set it to like two and a half degrees, it's a, it's a road car. It doesn't need it. So I want to go maximum one degree. That side is a lot more than this side. I'd say this side is probably close to where it needs to be. So let's have a look first at our camber. Right, and so what we've got is this gauge. These are really good, they're expensive, but they are worth the money. So at the minute, CBR is camber. So this is self zeroing. So what we'll do is we'll just rest this on the rib. And we are at 2.1, maybe across to 2.2. 2.1, 2 2.2, 2 .2, that's a lot. And go around here. Just on the rim, just on the rim. 0.8. So it's quite a lot of difference, isn't it? So really, that side, we need to come down to match the other side, really. Which is quite easy to do. Just the bottom arms, slide it in. Do a little bit at a time, and it'll go in. Right, so what I'm doing here, as you can see, is because you're sort of chasing your tail with it, you have to do some adjusting and then check your camber again. Here you can see I'm having to go around the front again to undo the jam nuts some more. And you have to turn back around and you have to go to the other side and do a bit more of adjustment and then you'll recheck your camber again and then you've got to do it again and again until you get the camera to somewhere where you want to be. I ended up wanting to get both sides to around about zero because when I start adjusting the caster angle, it will adjust the camber as well because the arm is pivoting around a point. So it's just test, adjust, test, adjust. You have to keep rolling the car forwards and backwards because as you adjust, you get friction in the tyre. So the tyre itself is stopping it from adjusting if you if you catch my drift because the tire's not sliding on the floor so what i'm doing is just this over and over and uh, we'll see where we go from there right then we had a slight adjustment issue with this side of the car 
Now I've had this before on other cars I've worked on and with different bottom arms from all so all kinds of companies. Basically, you you haven't got enough adjustment. They max out. And that's not so much the arm's fault. It's the car's fault itself. Because not every subframe's the same. Not every car's the same. So you'll put these arms on one car and you won't be able to get enough adjustment on one side. And you'll put it on another car and you won't be able to get adjustment on the other side. So all I do is the bottom arm itself, I'll cut 5mm off. And then the adjuster that goes through it, you put that in the lathe, knock off that 5mm. It just gives you that little bit of extra leeway to get that little bit more adjustment you need whilst having a little bit of spare in the kitty. You get me? So you give it all a nice clean up, nice bit of deeper, a bit of grease, and then off we go. Right, so what you saw me do there is I ran out of adjustment on my camber. So I just take 5mm off. And that gives you that little bit more inward motion without losing the washer. I have to do this to pretty much every set of these I come come across because difference in cars, difference in subframes, bottom pins, bottom arm bushes. You know, you you can lose that easily a degree, and this wouldn't go under one and a half degrees on that arm. <clears throat> so, if this was one and a half degree, if this was two. I think it was 2.3. Is it 2.3? Something like that. And it won't go under one and a half on my sub frame. Where the other one is eight. So five, six, seven, eight. Well, they were probably both set at like 8.8. 8. But because we put them on my sub frame, which is slightly different, do you know what I mean? The one side's come out. So you just cut it off, turn this down. Reassemble and start again. Well, now I've had to take the wheel off anyway. I was going to try and do it without taking the wheels off, but because I've had to take the wheel off anyway, I'm going to put the team dynamic on it. May as well. Because I've got to let the suspension settle before we can do any adjustments. So, what I'll do, I'll throw this back on. So, my phone died. So while you was away charging, this one now is at like minus 0.2. It's a virtually square. And this one is also a 0.2 virtually square. So square them both up. So what we want to do, because once if we have to adjust the, the caster, the camber will change anyway. As it goes back, it becomes less a camber. As it comes forward, because you're pivoting the front arm around itself. No, sorry, as it goes back, you give you more camber, forwards, less camber. So we need to work out our caster angle now, which is what we're gonna use a little thing for. So what we're gonna do, we've gotta put a tape mark on the floor. Then we need to work out 20 degrees one way, 20 degrees the other way. Because you only turn the wheel 20 degrees when you're looking at your caster angle. So she'll be turned 20 degrees in, Set the gauge on, set it to zero, 20 degrees the other way, put it on, and that'll tell you your degree of caster angle. It's the same way you work out kingpin angle as well, which coincides, we also want to know the kingpin angle of a mini. So I can use that in the dimensions on the space frame. So let's have a look at this caster angle, shall we? So we need a bit of tape, a bit of pen. tape muffly in line with the wheel we're not talking precision in a way center the other one all right <coughs> we'll roll it back degrees so we're going to go 
20 degrees there. degrees there. See? And so now that will give us our turn for the one way. Now turn for the other way. 20 degrees, 20 degrees. So we're going to go 20 degrees to one way, which actually is one full rotation of the steering wheel, which is going to be easier to work out, isn't it? <clears throat> so now we're doing this on. We want LED off his camber, on his caster. So we put that on there. Zero. And then turn to normal. And then turn back. 20 degrees the other way. And we are at 1.4. That is not a lot of cast angle, is it, people? Yeah? Not a lot of cast angle at all. So we want to get this to about 6 degrees, 5 degrees, 4, somewhere around. Somewhere in that line. By no means am I a suspension expert. I just seem to make it work. So I'm going to crack the big nut off on my tie bar, if I can. If I can, that is. They're not the best to be undone. Yeah. Fucking okay, Jesus. There we go. Smooth this nut. <clears throat> right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you. So, when I was doing my camber, it's that nut there. And this is the adjuster nut. So when you tighten that in, this arm goes in and out. Caster to this one. So if you shorten this rod, you get more caster. You can make it longer, you get less. So we want more caster. So we need to turn this to bring this wheel forward. Now it gives more caster. All right, let's get doing it. Right, so we're adjusting the caster angle now. Now, the, it's a really tricky thing to do because a small amount can make quite a bit of adjustment, so you have to keep measuring. Same as when you're doing the camber. You do measurement, then adjust, measurement, adjust, measurement, adjust. And then when you think you've got that to about where you want it to do, you then have to go back and start measuring your camber again because your camber would have disappeared. So... Not only have you got to keep an eye on your cash strangle that you're adjusting, you've got to keep an eye on your camber. And then once you've adjusted your camber, you've then got to go back and adjust your caster again because you're pushing that bottom arm out, which has made it adjust the caster. So you've got to do your caster, your camber, and you just keep doing it till you get it to where you want to be. And at the end then, you just start tracking it up. 
because your tracking would have gone way out. So here I'm looking for about 20 minutes tow out on the front, which is the same as what I run on my race car. And that seems to work really well. On a mini, it just it, 20 minutes out, and you can think there's 60 minutes in one degree. So if that's a bit of information for you, now you know, 60 minutes in a degree, and I'll run 20 minutes tow out on the front of my cars. All right, then, here we go. Right, so you can see just how much work goes into messing around with mini suspension. So now we've got five and a half degrees caster, 0.5 degrees camber, and about 20 minutes tow out on the front and near enough dead square on the rear. No camber on the rear. So hopefully now she'll drive nice again. Well, she'll drive better than she did before. And considering this car was down the motorway, 70 mile an hour, one handed, easy as pie. You know what I mean? She used to drive really sweet. So now, Hopefully, she'll be a little bit sweeter. Well, for now, that's about it. Because that suspension bit took up quite a bit of time, didn't it? Even though you was on time lapse for most of it. It's just a visual representation of how long it takes to do stuff on these. And uh, I'll take you out for driving it when I get it back around the front. Right, quick video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. See ya.